In a previous video, we worked out the mechanics of matrix multiplication. This video focuses on interpretations of matrix multiplication, particularly in terms of the columns of matrices. Recall the mechanics of matrix multiplication. If we multiply A times B to get C, then to get this top left entry of the answer matrix C, we take the top row of A and multiply it by the left row of B one element at a time. 2 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus 1 times 3 gives us 11. To get the entry in the first row second column, we do the first row of A times the second column of B. And in general, we saw the IJ entry of A times B. By that I mean the entry of A times B in row I and column J. We get this by taking the product of row I in matrix A and column J in matrix B. Recall that to take the product of a row vector and a column vector, we multiply the corresponding entries and add them up. Sometimes this is called a dot product. But instead of thinking of this matrix product element by element, I want to think of it column by column. What does the first column of this answer matrix C represent? In fact, this column, 11, 15, comes from multiplying the matrix A by the first column of B. That makes sense if you think about where each of these entries of the first column of C comes from. The top entry comes from the top row of A times the first column of B. The next entry comes from the next row of A times the first column of B. All the entries of the first column of C come from multiplying rows of A by the first column of B in order. So that's just the same thing as multiplying the matrix A by the first column of B. And similarly, to get the second column of C, we can multiply the whole matrix A by the second column of B. So in general, when we multiply two matrices A times B, then the jth column of A times B tells us the product of A with the jth column of B. One way to write this is if you have A times a bunch of column vectors, I'll call them x1, x2, say x3, x4, in case we have four column vectors in B, then this is the same thing as just multiplying A times each column vector and sticking them together into a matrix. Let's apply this column interpretation in an example. Suppose we know that we have a matrix here, I'll call it A, and we know that A times this column vector gives us this column vector. Notice the dimensions work out fine, and the arithmetic works out fine. And I've also pre-calculated that A times this other column vector is this column vector, and A times this third column vector gives us this column vector. So now, if we want to multiply the same matrix A times the matrix we get by sticking those little 2 by 1 column vectors all together into a 2 by 3 matrix, that's just the same thing as doing A times 2, 1 as the first column, A times 1, 1 as the second column, A times 0, 3 as the third column. And so it's just the same thing as concatenating all those column answers, like this. Before I look at the third interpretation of matrix multiplication, I want to define a linear combination of vectors. A linear combination of vectors is just a sum of scalar multiples of the vectors. So for example, if this is our vector v1, v2, and v3, here we've written down a linear combination, 3 times v1 plus 4 times v2 plus negative 2 times v3. 
these scalars 3, 4, negative 2 are called the coefficients in the linear combination. So there's a third interpretation of matrix multiplication, A times B equals C, that focuses on the columns of A as well as the columns of C. So this interpretation says that the jth column of A times B tells us the linear combination of the columns of A with coefficients given by the entries in the jth column of B. Let me show you what I mean. So to get, say, the first column of C, we're going to use the entries in the first column of B to tell us that we want 1 times the first column of A plus 2 times the second column of A plus 3 times the third column of A. That's 1 times 2, negative 4, plus 2 times 3, 2, plus 3 times 1, 5. And you can check that that adds up to the first column of C, 11, 15, right? Because 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 3 times 1, that's 2 plus 6 plus 3, which is 11. 1 times negative 4 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times 5, that's negative 4 plus 4 plus 15, which is 15. Similarly, to get the second column vector of C, we can use these numbers in B to tell us that we need the linear combination negative 2 times the first column of A, plus 5 times the second column of A, plus 1 times the third column of A. You can verify that really does give us this column of C. It makes sense that this works because we saw before that each column of C just comes from multiplying A times the corresponding column of B. And when we multiply a matrix A by the column, then we're doing a bunch of dot products, right? Dot product of this with this, and then the dot product of this with this. But each dot product is just the same thing as taking a linear combination of entries of A where the coefficients of linear combination are given by the column of B. So we're taking a linear combination of these three numbers, sticking it in the first entry, a linear combination of these three numbers, sticking it in the second entry. That's just doing a linear combination of each column and sticking it in the column. If we want to write this out in notation, then if we write the columns of A as, say, V1, V2, V3, I'll just use the same matrix B, then the columns of C will be 1 times V1 plus 2 times V2 plus 3 times V3 for the first column, and negative 2 V1 plus 5 V2 plus 1 times V3 for the second column. Let's do an example in which it's useful to think of the matrix product A times B equals C in terms of linear combinations of columns of A. So let me copy down my matrix A, and I'm going to call its column vectors V1 and V2. I need to multiply it by a matrix B, and my answer matrix is going to have in its first column 2 times V1 plus 3 V2. That's because my first instructions say that the first column of A times B will be twice or two times the first column of A plus three times the second column of A. In its second column, negative 3 times the first column plus 4 times the second column, that's going to be negative 3v1 plus 4v2. The third column will be v1 plus v2, and the fourth column, 5 times the second column, that's just going to be 5v2. Well, we know that we can think of matrix multiplication as each column of B telling us, giving us instructions for linear combinations of the columns of A. And so the first column of B has to be instructions, take twice V1 plus 3 times V2. That means we need an entry of 2 here, an entry of 3 here. Since the next column of C is supposed to be negative 3 times the first column of A plus 4 times the second column of A, 
our instructions in B are negative 3, 4. Similarly, the third column of B needs to be 1, 1, and the fourth column of B needs to be 0, 5. In this video, we talked about three interpretations of matrix multiplication. The first interpretation is that the entry, the ij entry of the product a times b is the ith row of a times the jth column of b. The second interpretation of matrix multiplication says that we can think about the columns of the answer as being a times the columns of b. So the jth column of a times b is a times the jth column of b. Finally, the third interpretation says that the jth column of a times b is a linear combination of the columns of A with coefficients given by the jth column of B. There are other interpretations of matrix multiplication as well, but these three will give us the tools we need for now.